significant limit of dollar in your uh, current account with the state bank overnight in your bank branch or in your head office. Those limitations, ceiling limits, if you breach them, you are penalized by the state bank. It was there when I was with Citibank, and I'm sure it's still there. So you have all these things, industry, banking industry, cement industry, manufacturing, any industry that you are, you need to look at what is the risk appetite. Is everyone doing the same thing and I'm not doing, then I'm behind in the business. If everyone is taking 100% risk in the business, if I'm not, then I'm going to be behind them. Like everyone on the strike day take the risk to come into the office and I'm not, then I, my absenteeism report will go high up. I've lost many days at work. My promotion will be jeopardized. So those are the things that the risk that you need to face, you need to measure that how the industry is progressing, what are the challenges, do I take this risk or do I not take this risk? That is based, that is dependent on the risk appetite of the institution, industry, and the allowance provided by the regulatory bodies. Can I keep more than $20 million at Citibank branch? Or just for example, at any bank, by breaking the ceiling limit of the foreign exchange? Can I do it? How many times can I do it? What are the penalties? And what are the penalties given to the other bank? So I can look at it in that perspective and say these are the things. So risk matrix, when you define risk matrix, when you look into the risk, it's not just one dimensional. It's multi-dimensional. You need to look at the environment. You need to look at the regulatory environment. You need to look at the people you're dealing with. And above all, you need to take consent and present it in the right way to your stakeholders which is the most important is the shareholder and if you're not working at the CEO level then you need to make sure that you need to take your bosses in confidence to implement the loss grid or the risk grid to say to convince them that this is what we can save money it's nothing about fascinating about risk uh, management it's all about increasing the profit of the company that's what the businesses are interested in even the charities, they run for profit. They call it a different fancy name. Does anyone know what it is? Fancy name for the charity is profit. Yes, surplus. So they call it surplus for the, uh, for the donations they collect. Uh, very active NGOs in Pakistan and all around the world. Uh, you'll be surprised, I mean, that, that will take the, uh, too much of a time, but uh, We've done some dissection on fee of the, uh, the charities uh, operating in Pakistan. Uh, it is surprising that some of them have a very high administration cost distributed among the relatives of the charity directors and the committee members. It's quite bizarre that they get funding in dollars from all over the world and uh, it gets distributed through the wrong filters to the wrong people and work is not getting done as it should have been. However, those are, those are different things. So the, this is what the risk is, that it's an overall exposure to the environment, overall exposure to what you can lose, what you cannot. We need to measure how much we can spend to control the risk. What time of my day should be spent on risk and should be spent on creating balance sheet, P&L and accounts and all that, or doing my daily job. If I spend whole month on risk, what's going to happen to the monthly P&L? What's going to happen to the monthly forecast? So that needs to be discussed with your management, what their risk appetite. Are they willing to take the risk or not? So with that, I close my presentation. And uh, I welcome any questions from the floor from any of you uh, who wants to ask any questions. Please feel free to do so. And thank you all for listening to me for such a long time. And uh, I know that uh, it is difficult when you have simple slides rather than running a whole film in front of you to sit down quietly and not doze off. So I once again thank you very much for being very attentive throughout the presentation. And uh, I welcome any questions from the floor. As you mentioned that, uh, 
majority of the losses, uh, globally majority of the losses incurred due to operational risk. But in Pakistan, uh, most of the banks only focus on credit risk. So what do you think that, uh, uh, how, uh, what is the scope of operational risk in Pakistan? Right. Uh, credit risk, uh, people look at it, credit risk is, is basically in different terms. One, you look at credit risk as you're given credit or loan to somebody, the person has ran away. That's the main thing. But if you look at it in deep terms, why the person was issued the loan first with the fake documents. Now, if you look at it in the banking terms, if you look at it in the back office, people who are responsible for KYC, the term, know your client. Do we really know our client? Have we really checked the person lives at the same address? Have we really checked the person have the stock that he mentioned up to the value what is mentioned in there. Is our engineering department gone and checked the stock? Now, this comes back again and ties back as an operational job. So these are the operational areas that we look at. Most of the banks are very, very focused on credit risk because they are, we're talking about in those terms, is the consumer banking. And know your client in the consumer banking, people would go in. I, I know somebody came up to me and uh, somebody came to their house and uh, just asked the details. I was there, and the person said, I said, what was that? And he said, uh, the person came just from another bank, I applied for the credit card. So now we have started to move on and check where the peop people are living. The person who's saying, this is I am, this is who I am, we are checking the credibility of the people, that who they are saying they are, they exist. Whereas like 10 years, 15, 15 years or 16 years ago, when I was at Citibank, this wasn't the case. You come in with the ID card, whether it's fake or genuine, we'll open the account for you. Doesn't matter. You show the money, we'll give you the access to it. And that's what happened with BCCI. And uh, it, it's more sort of a different type of game which happened with the BCCI investment funds and uh, investment and they've gone into liquidation because of that. But that's completely different. Credit risk is interlinked with operational risk because your operational department failed to respond to the requirements or overlooked what should have been done at the initial stages they should have looked at it now I'll give you an example it's a say for example if, if a friend of the some minister would come in and say I am this friend a telephone calls comes in the duties of the operational risk and know your clients person as an officer for that area is to tell them, look, sorry, you cannot do it. Whether you're a friend or you're not a friend, you need to write your report and say, I have my reservation on this. Unfortunately, I understand the working environment here that you cannot be that bold. You have to be very diplomatic and political to say those statements. Otherwise, the best place for you at home, you know, that's what happens here without any mitigation to the loss of your job or anything like that. So this is kind of one, one thing that we need to change in the environment. It needs to be changed. That we stop listening to people or we need to try to at least raise our concern. Mention that in your report in a most diluted way. Say something about it. That is what we get paid for. Say for example, there, there is an application and say this loan should be issued. Don't take it on yourself. Put, the, put your engineering department, say the stock valuation as per the banking engineering department is not up to the value of the loan. However, if it is emphasized by the president of the bank, it can be released on the permission of the senior authorities. You're out of it, simply. Sorry. So, that's, I mean, does that answer your question? Uh, or? Uh, uh, what is the scope of operational risk in Pakistan? Either there is also uh, uh, regulation of regulators to... Uh, Regulators, the state bank has been shouting about um, all the audit reports from the banks. I mean, state bank have been now, I understand and know, they're, they're crawling about all over the place with several banks at this point in June. 
this time and everyone is hiding things under the 